Hi everyone, my name is Jeremy. Today we're going to do a core focus flow throw and arm balance. It'll be nice and short. Won't be too strenuous or too difficult, but if you'd like, you can have two blocks to modify, or just, you know, if you use props in your practice and then you need them, go ahead and grab them now. Otherwise, get seated in a easy seated position, crisscross applesauce, whatever you like to call it. Palms face up or face down. And we'll begin with a three part breath. So the way this breath works is you breathe in through your belly, letting it be soft and inhale, expanding like a balloon. And then you let, after you've inhaled as full as you can into your belly, you inhale through your rib cage for the ribs expand. And then once you feel full there, you start to breathe in up through your upper chest. And then just let everything go, breathing out through your mouth. And we'll do two more like that. So inhale to the belly, rib cage, upper chest, exhale, side out. Last one, inhale, belly, rib cage, upper chest, exhale, side. And just come back into your breath, let it be natural. Observe how you breathe, maybe it's your belly, maybe it's your chest. Either is fine, just observe. And from here, go ahead and come into a tabletop position. So have your wrist creases facing forward, so just parallel to the front of the mat. This may mean your index fingers are forward or your middle fingers, either is fine. Hips above the knees, squeeze your hands isometrically towards each other, engaging the forearms. And from here, we'll take a few scapular push-ups. So the way this works is you, on the exhale, push everything into the mat, spread your shoulder blades apart. Now the inhale, just dip the chest down. So squeezing the shoulder blades together. So on the inhale, we lower down, exhale, push, spread the shoulder blades apart. And inhale, lower, keep squeezing the hands towards each other, retract the shoulder blades. Exhale, push into the mat, spread them apart. Inhale, lower. We'll do a few more like that. If you'd like to up level, you can come and take your feet into a plank position. So we lower down, retract shoulder blades, pinch towards each other. Like you're squeezing a pencil on the back and exhale, spread your shoulder blades apart. Squeeze the hands together, engage the core, low belly. Just find one more. Inhale, lower down, retract the shoulder blades. Exhale, push into the mat, stay in your plank pose. Or if you're on your knees or in tabletop, stay there and then just come back into a neutral spine. From here, we'll take a few rounds of cat-cow. So on the inhale, let the elbows bend slightly, chest forward, cow pose, cow tilt, toes tucked or untucked. Exhale, push your hands from the mat, cat pose. This time, take the chin to your chest, set the low belly to spine. Inhale, let the belly be soft. Inhale, expand the belly like a balloon, chest forward, gaze up if it's comfortable on the neck. Exhale, spread the shoulder blades apart, suck the low belly to the spine, slight tuck of the tailbone. One more like that, inhale, cow pose, cow tail, anterior tilt to the pelvis, pelt, the tailbone's lifting up. Exhale, imagine like you're touching your forehead to your pubic bone as you spread the shoulder blades apart, and then come back into a neutral tabletop. From here, take your thumbs facing the front of the mat and the fingertips facing the sides, and then just do a few circles of the wrists. Just warming up into the wrists and the shoulders before we do a few arm balances later. Reverse the circles. And then from here, we'll take the thumbs, the fingers facing it back towards the knees. This may be a little strenuous on the wrist. If you're not used to this, you can do one hand at a time and just play with reversing. Or if it's comfortable, you can take a few rounds of cat-cow with your wrists facing forward, your fingertips facing your knees. So inhale, cow pose, just the same action. Exhale, push the hands into the mat, cat pose. Two more like that, inhale, cow tilt. Exhale, push the hands into the mat. Inhale, let the belly expand, chest forward, heart proud. Exhale, squeeze the hands towards each other still. Protract the shoulder blades, cat pose. And then reverse the hands back to normal. Tuck the toes, lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. So you can have a slight bend in the knees if your hamstrings are tight. Bring awareness to the hands grip with all 10 fingertips. Still keep that isometric squeeze of the forearms towards each other. Wrap the shoulder blades onto the back body. 
low belly of the spine, that anterior tilt of the pelvis, like in your cow tilt, and then if you have all that, you can slowly start to bend or lower the heels towards the mouth. Imagine like you're spreading the inner thighs out and back behind you if your heels are grounded. Push firmly into the mat and then with the gaze, you can bring it between the legs if that's comfortable. From here, take an inhale. Gaze between the thumbs and slowly start to walk your feet to the front of the mat. Into a forward fold, it's an asana. Feet hips distance apart. You can take two fists to measure that distance. Bend the knees as much as you need to to have the belly onto the thighs. Wrap the hands around the elbows and just take a nice rag doll. And from here, halfway lift, using blocks at first, take the blocks underneath your hands, stick it out, you elongate the spine, reaching the crown of the head forward, tailbone back, and exhale forward fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up, bending the knees. Upward salute, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, take the hands into the front of the chest. And then lower down by your side, mountain pose, Tadasana. We'll do a quick sun salutation just to warm up the body. And now reach the arms up, Urdhvasasana, upward salute, pinky slightly in, triceps engaged. Exhale, bend the knees, belly to thigh as you lower down, hinging at the hips. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana, half forward fold, fingertips to block, shins or mat. Exhale, forward fold. One more like that. Inhale, halfway lift, this time take the hands and the shins if it's comfortable, or keep using the blocks. And exhale, frame the feet. Step one foot back, then the other, plank pose. Stay in your plank. Take an inhale. Exhale, lower down all the way to the belly. Fingertips underneath the shoulder blades. Press the tops of the feet into the mat. Pubic bone into the mat. Lift the heart up, cobra pose, bhujangasana. Exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Take a breath, come back into the breath. Back into the body. Wherever you are, bring your big toes to touch, and from here, lift the right leg up to the ceiling. Keep that right glute engaged. Try to keep the hips square here, and then exhale, bring the knee to nose. Imagine like you're in that plank position. Protract the shoulder blades, hollowing out the front body. Two more like that. Inhale, lift the right leg up to the ceiling. Right glute engaged. Exhale, knee to nose. Protract the shoulder blades. Inhale, last one. Exhale, knee to nose. And then step the foot through. Low lunge, Anjani Asana. Untuck the back foot. So make sure the middle toes of the back foot is facing directly back. No sickle in the ankle. Right hip back, left hip forward, left glute engaged. I'll reach the arms up, inhale. Exhale, left arm forward, right arm back, gazing at the right. Low lunge twist. Two more like that. Inhale, reach the arms up. Triceps engage like an upward salute. Exhale, right arm back behind you, left arm forward. One more like that. Inhale, reach the arms up. And exhale, twist it. And then from here, just stay for a breath. See if you can exalt your lunge, taking the back hand to the back thigh. And then exhale, frame the right foot, tuck the toes in the back and lower, release the right hip back, left hip forward, half split. Spike into that front right heel. Imagine like you're isometrically dragging the heel across the mat, but it's not moving. From here, if you have blocks, go ahead and bring blocks, otherwise be on your fingertips. And we'll do a few leg lifts coming into the core and that deep inner core up into our hip flexors. So hollow out the front body and see if you can lift the leg up even just an inch. You may not even be able to lift it up. Just imagine it lifting and be happy if you can. But if you have the blocks, you can push into the blocks and hollowing out the body, lifting the leg. And then if you can, you can come up to the fingertips. This might be you might think this is impossible for some of you, but just give it a try. And we'll lift up the leg, and we'll do two more like that. Lower, inhale, exhale, lift up. One more like that, inhale, exhale, lift up. From here, frame the right foot, place the left hand on the side of the right foot, reaching the right arm up to the ceiling, simple twist. You're on the to back toes, the toe mounds of the back foot. Try to bring the right hip back, left hip forward, engage that left glute. One more breath here, inhale. And then from here, coming into side plank, if you need to modify, take the left foot out. Otherwise, we'll stay in up onto our left heel with both our feet in side plank, Vashisthasana. Modification looks like this with the back, let the left knee lower. From our Vashisthasana side plank, you can stay here. 
if you'd like to ele elevate or level up, you can reach the right arm towards the front of the mat and lift the right leg up and then take a few pulses, elbow to knee. So inhale, extend, exhale, contract, elbow to knee. One more, inhale, extend, exhale, contract. From here, from your Vashisasana side plank, lower the right hand down, step the right foot down, plank pose, inhale. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga, halfway this time, elbows parallel. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Come back into your breath. If you have Ujjayi Pranayama in your practice or that oceanic breathing, that's like constricting the back of your throat, you can go ahead and start doing that now if you haven't been already. From here, lift the left leg up to the ceiling, left glute engage, inhale. Exhale, protract the shoulder blades, uh, knee to nose. Two more like that, inhale, lift the left leg up, left glute engage, push the hands into the mat. Exhale, protract the shoulder blades, like you're in a high plank, knee to nose. Inhale, last one. And then exhale, knee to nose, stay for a second, and then place that foot through. If you think that's impossible, you can always just Drag the foot as much as you need to to get it to the between the hands. Rise on up, low lunge, untuck the back foot. No sickle in that back ankle. The front knee is directly over the ankle of the front foot. Arms reach up, inhale, low lunge, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, twist, left arm back, right arm forward. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, left arm back, right arm forward. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, stay for a moment in your Anjaneyasana. And then you can take that left hand and exalt it. Exalt it, low lunge. And then exhale, frame that left foot. Shift the hips back as we prepare for those leg lifts that you may have thought were impossible before. So in our half split, the left hip is moving back, right hip slightly moving forward. Imagine like your inner thighs are scissoring. And keep that cow tilt to the pelvis, that anterior tilt, that forward tilt as your tailbone lifts up to the ceiling. Stay for a moment. And then from here, you might slightly round and use the blocks as you try to lift the leg up. If the blocks are too easy, you can start to lower them as you lift the leg up, eventually onto your fingertips. So take an inhale, we'll do three more lifts. Exhale, lift up, engage the hip flexors. Inhale. Exhale, lift up. One more like that, inhale. Exhale, lift up. And then place the, the foot down, right hand to the side of the, of the left foot. As you reach the left arm up to the ceiling, you're in a simple low lunge twist. Not so simple, actually. Try to externally rotate the bottom right hand, right, right shoulder rather, plugging the humerus bone, the upper arm bone into the socket. One more breath here, inhale. And then from here, if you modify it on the other side, you just take the right foot, foot and extend it, coming into your side plank, Vashisasana. Otherwise, come into full Vashisasana on the blade edge of that right foot. Big toe mounds are touching, stay here. External rotation of the upper arm bone and the right hand. And then if you like to up level, take the left hand over. Take an inhale. And exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, extend. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, extend. Exhale, elbow to knee. Stay for a breath, inhale. Exhale, place the left hand down, plank pose. Take a breath here, inhale. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga. You can always bend the knees, making sure the shoulders don't go past 90 degrees. Inhale, cobra, upward facing dog. Pushing the tops of the feet to the mat, heart through, shoulder blades for track. Exhale, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Toes can be touching or the feet hips distance. You can always have a nice bend in the knees, keeping the anterior tilt to the pelvis. Heels don't have to be grounded, but if they can, you can go ahead and do so. And just come back and take two to three breaths in your downward facing dog. From here, gaze between your thumbs. Slight bend in the knees and step or hop to the front of the mat, into a forward fold, Uttanasana. From here, coming into chair pose, shift the weight to the heels, 
Squeeze the legs towards each other, Utkatasana. Arms reach up like an upward salute. Inner thighs engaged, core engaged, low belly to spine. Reach the arms up, inhale, one more breath. And exhale, straighten the legs, bring the hands in front of the chest down by your sit mouth and bows. And just come back into the breath, back into the body. If you like to set an intention for the rest of the class, you can bring your hands in front of your chest. It's a song called Glen Yoga, just having intention with our movement. So you could be like, maybe I am strong, I am focused, whatever you want, or just nothing, if that's too woo-woo for you. Whatever you like, take what you want, leave what you don't. From here, reach the arms up to the ceiling, Urbha Hastasana, Pinky Svalya, triceps engage. Exhale, bending the knees as much as you need to, forward fold. Inhale, back into chair pose, Gut Katasana. Exhale, take the hands to the chest. Inhale, lift the chest up slightly. Exhale, take the left elbow outside the right knee, trying to make sure the left knee is not moving past the right. As you push elbow to knee, knee into elbow, and start to revolve your heart open. Revolve chair, Paramita Utkatasana. Try to have the shoulders in one line, so you can gaze up if it's comfortable. And then from here, just come back up with the chair pose, inhale. Exhale, take the arms back behind you as you lift the left leg up and step it back, staying elevated, keeping the knee elevated, rising up into your crescent lunge, Alanasana. So try to have the front knee over the front ankle, drag the right hip down and back, left hip forward. This left glute, the more this left glute you engage, the more the top of the thigh can stretch. Eventually trying to straighten that back leg. Doesn't have to get there today though. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, twist it, right arm back, left arm forward like we did in our little lunge. Stay here. Inhale, exalted crescent viparita alanasana. Take a breath here, feel stretch all across the lateral side of your body, the lats and your serratus and trigger here. Exhale, left elbow outside the right knee into a prayer twist like we were in our chair. If this is too uncomfortable, you can always just stay in the twist here. Otherwise, try to come into a twist and revolve your crescent lunge open. Take an inhale here, inhale. And exhale, cartwheel it open like a dance into warrior two as the left hand goes back, right arm forward. This back foot pivots toward the pinky side edges parallel to the back of the mat. And this front heel is in line with the arch of the back foot. Warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Isometrically move your heels towards each other, engaging all parts of the legs. Keep weight in that outside pinky edge so this outer glute is engaged in the back leg. And then gaze over the front middle finger, shoulder soft. Inhale. Exhale, soften, Virabhadrasana. From here, take an inhale, reverse warrior as you take that right hand. Imagine like you're pushing that wall behind you. It's a side bend, not a back bend. Exhale, right elbow to the front knee as you try to push that front wall in front of you. Modified side angle. Two more like that, like a dance inhale, reverse warrior. Push that back wall side, then across the right side. Exhale, modified side angle. Last one, so when our obliques are contracting, this left side's contracting, stretching the right. And exhale, this right side's contracting, stretching the left. So you're getting stretch and contract in both. Last one, inhale, reverse for you. Exhale, take the hands to the inside of this right foot, pivot on down, and move the right foot out slightly, heel toe it to the side of the mat, preparing for a lizard punch. You can stay right here, you can start to move the foot more like 45 degrees, more parallel, to like the front right corner of the mat. And then wherever you have space, you can come on the outer blade edge and just play around, getting into the hips and the back hip flexors of the back foot. Whatever is comfortable for you, you can lower down on the elbows if that's comfortable. Just keeping, trying to keep the shoulders away from the ears, pulling the chest through like you're in a heart opener for today's class. Take another breath. And on the exhale, however you like, however many steps you need to, just take the left foot and step it outside the left hand and lower down into a Malasana squat. If ankle flexibility is an issue, you can always come up on the toes. You can also place a block underneath just to help with any mobility you may need, whatever you need in your practice. It's your practice. 
Take the elbows to knees, push elbows to knees, knees into elbows, open up the heart space. Use it as a self-assist, take another breath here in your malasana. And then from here, lift up the hips slightly and take the hands, the wrists, behind the knees and lower back down. And then start to open and close the wrists like a little starburst, like a lot of teachers call them. And then having the pressure on the wrist just helps with strengthening the wrist as well. Getting strength and mobility, as well as a nice hip opener in your malasana. We'll do 10 more, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and done. And we'll take the hands back in front of the chest in malasana. From here, preparing for kropo is an arm balance. You may be thinking he's crazy if he thinks I'm going to try an arm balance right now. Stay in malasana if you don't want to try it. Otherwise, if you like to play with crow, you can have a pillow or something if you think you might smash your face, but trust me, you won't. You probably just, you know, lightly tap it. But from here, take the knees to the elbows. I like to take it to the elbow point, like this little divot in the elbow. That way it just makes transitions later when you do other transitions. You may think, why would I do that? But try it. Take the knees to the elbow points here, and then lift one knee up, having the hands frame like chaturanga, squeeze the hands towards the other. Keep that protracted spine like in cat, like those scapular push-ups, and then see if you can lift the other leg up. Once both legs are up, you may be falling, you're playing with your balance right here, but once both legs are up, squeeze the hands towards each other, protract the shoulder blades, low belly the spine, see if you can use your hamstrings to squeeze the legs, the feet, up to the butt. Inhale. And then from here, you can just keep playing, lowering back down. Otherwise, if you like to try shooting it back, you'll shift the weight forward and then see if you can lightly tap your feet down in Chaturanga and then go through a vinyasa. Upward facing dog, or Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog, Baddha Mukha Svanasana. And then come back to your breath. Let anything go, what just came up. Some of you may think, oh, this is easy compared to what Jeremy normally teaches or Jer 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 Jeremy normally does. I'm just battling right now, it's okay. And for some of you new to yoga, I might think this is crazy. But you know, it's all about the journey. There's no destination, there's no right pose, wrong pose. It's just feeling good in the body. From here, gaze between your thumbs, coming up onto the knees, on the toes, bend the knees, and then see if you can bring the hips over the wrists as you hop forward into your forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, fingertips to block shin or mat, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, forward fold, hips up to the ceiling, Uttanasana. Inhale, reverse swan dive, arms reach up to the ceiling, or Bhavasana, upward salute. Exhale, hands in front of the chest and down by your side, Tadasana, come back to your breath. Think of your breath like the waves of an ocean. So it's like why the Ujjayi, that ocean breathing, the sounds like waves, sounds like the ocean. And then, you know, when it gets more erratic, just think of like your breath like the ocean. So when it's getting too fast paced, it means you need to slow down. Never going to a point past where you need to go. Always just riding the edge, not going past it. From here, reach the arms up, inhale, Urdhva Hasasana. Exhale, hinge of the hips, forward fold. Inhale, Utkatasana, bend the knees, shift the weight into the heels. Chair pose. Exhale, hands, bring the chest. Inhale, lift the heart up. Exhale, right elbow to the outside of the left knee. Squeeze the knees together. Make sure the right knee is not coming past the left. And then try to revolve your heart open. See if you can keep the thumbs at the chest, center of the chest. Shoulders in one line. Stay for a breath in your revolved chair. And then on the exhale, reach the arms back up. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, swing the arms back behind you, reach the right leg back, and then rise on up into crescent lunge, adjusting the stance as needed, 
have the hips on the feet on two railroad tracks. Hips distance apart, reach the arms up, inhale. And then exhale, twisted crescent. See if you can keep this right glute engaged, right hip moving forward, left hip moving back. One more like that, inhale. Exhale, bring the hands to the heart this time. You can always stay in this twist or if you like to go further. Take the right elbow outside the left knee. Thumbs at the heart. Stay for a breath. And then like a dance, we're gonna dance open into warrior two. Reach the arm, um, right arm back, heart wheel, left arm forward as the right foot pivots to be parallel with the side back of the mat. And then this front left heel is perpendicular to the arch of the back foot. Keep engagement in the outer glute, pulling this right left front glute down and back. Keep weight in that outside pinky edge of the right foot. You can even tap the side glute to see if it's engaged. Take a breath here. Soften. Inhale, dance it back. Nipper reach of your address in the reverse warrior. Exhale, take the left the elbow to knee as you reach the right arm over mountain like you're pushing that wall in front of you. Feel the side stretch. Inhale, push that wall back behind you, reverse forward. Exhale, elbow to knee, modified side angle. One more like that, inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, modified side angle, press Konasana. And then reverse it one last time, inhale. Exhale, take the hands to the inside of the left foot, lowering down, pivoting onto the back right toe mounts. And then you can move this foot out a little bit, coming into your lizard lunge. You could take the left toes to the left corner of the mat, making it more like a 45 degree angle. You can also come onto the blade edge, just make sure the knee and the ankle are in one line, protecting the knee joint. Then you can start to shift, move around in your lizard lunge. You don't have to stay static. I like to move around a lot in my poses. You can lower down into the elbows, and then if you want to see what the elbows feels like, you can always take a block too, and take your elbows there, and just see how that feels in the body. Just stay for a few moments, you know what's coming. Or try not to think of what's coming, if you're not ready for that. Or just listen to me mumble. All right, one more breath here, and on your lizard lunge. And exhale, step that right foot outside the right hand and lower down into Malasana squat again. Adjusting as necessary, using props as necessary. Whatever's in your practice, all fine, all fun. Just here to have fun, have a good time. All right, preparing for crow pose again, Bakasana, if you'd like. So rising up onto the heels, taking the feet or the knees rather to the elbow joints right on that divot of the elbow, and you can lift one knee up, then the other. Make sure you're squeezing the hands towards each other. Protract the shoulder blades. Suck the low belly into the spine. Engage the core, gaze slightly forward. And then you lift one foot, then the other. Try to touch the big toes together. Engage the hamstrings. Squeeze everything towards the glutes. Stay here, and if you want to shoot it back, you can shoot it back. And I'll just demonstrate that one more time. So when we shoot back, we shift the weight even more forward using our chest and keeping control as the hands squeeze towards each other. And then chaturanga. And then cobra or upward facing dog. Opening up the heart. Engage the glutes. Exhale, hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Come back to the breath. Notice what came up in all of that nonsense. So not so much the core work you're used to probably doing, like sit-ups and crunches and bicycles. It's a little more of that internal core, that core stability here today. Take one more breath here, inhale. Exhale, gaze between the thumbs, and then jump or step to the front of the mat. Forward pull. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reverse one time, bend the knees as you knee as you come up, Urdhva Sasana, upward salute. Exhale, hands to the chest and down by your side, Tadasana, mountain pose. 
And we're almost there, almost finished. Give yourself some gratitude for working hard. From here, coming back to the chair pose, Utkatasana, bend the knees, shift the weight to the heels, squeeze the legs towards each other, glutes engaged. Chair pose, everyone's favorite pose, or not, probably not, <laughs> or just playing today. Take an inhale here, I'm gonna shift over so you can see me. So from our chair pose, coming back into that twisted chair, so left elbow outside the right knee, squeeze the knees towards each other. See if you'd like to play with side throw, otherwise just stay here. If you want to play with another arm balance, you'll bend into the toes, rising up onto the heels, from the big toe months off the heels. And you'll take this left hand as far as you can outside the right knee. And then this right hip is kind of like right in the middle of both the hands. So you'll take the hands and frame like you're preparing for like a push up. And you'll start to shift the weight. And then as you shift, you'll notice the legs want to come up. Squeeze the knees towards each other. See if you can lift up and then you can gaze to the side and smile if you're a crazy person like me. And then just stay as long as you'd like. See if that right hip can be right between the hands, right between the thumb points. Gaze wherever is comfortable. And if you're just in your side chair, that's also perfect. And then wherever you are, just rise back on up. Straighten the legs, arms reach up. And exhale, just hands down the side, mountain pose before we prepare to do that on the other side. All right, one more time. Inhale, arms reach up. Chair pose, bend from the knees. Exhale, take the hands to the chest. Inhale, reach the chest up. Exhale, take the right elbow outside the left knee. And this time we'll take side from the other side, parts of Bakasana. Lift up onto the big toe mounts. Off the heels, squeeze the knees still. Take the right tricep outside. The left knee. Take your hands, frame them like Chaturanga. Like keep that protracted position like we did in our cat pose. And then see if you can shift the weight forward, lifting the legs up. And then gaze wherever you'd like. Keeping that engagement of the core. It's a twist here. And then from here, lowering back down. Back into your chair pose. Rise back up. From your mat, mountain pose. And just observe. Don't beat yourself up. One of my favorite quotes is, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. All these stories we tell ourselves of, I'm not good enough, I can never do that. But if you tell yourself that, it just, you know, it becomes true. You create your reality. So if you truly want to do a pose or want to do something, just work on the how. Keep working day by day. And just enjoy the journey. From here, I'll reach the arms up, Urdhvastasana, and then exhale, forward fold. Slowly start to lower the hips. You can come up onto the toe mounts, and then just spread the legs apart, and then however you like to get there, just lower down onto your butt. Plop down, plop asana. Plop your ass on the ground, whatever you want to do. A graceful transition. And then lower down onto your back. All right, so now that we've engaged our core and found that core stability, we'll just stretch it out right before we do our spinal twists. So bridge pose, take the middle fingers as so you can graze the backs of the heels. Try to have the feet hip systems apart, middle toes are facing directly forward. And from here, press the shoulders into that back of the head into the mat as you lift the lower spine, mid spine, upper spine up, tuck the chin into the chest, I want the belly to be soft, just stretching out the core here. You can take a clasp if it's comfortable as you wrap one shoulder and then the other underneath. Retracting the shoulder blades towards each other. Letting the belly be soft here, expanding. Keeping engagement of the inner thighs so the knees aren't buckling out, they're staying parallel to the front of the mat. Take another breath here, inhale. And exhale, lower down, upper spine. Mid spine, lower spine, tailbone down, hug the knees up to the chest. Wind relieving pose off the muscle. From here, extend the left leg straight, right knee into chest. Exhale, take the right knee across the body for a supine twist. Take your right hand and like you're making a circle. 
rotate this arm all the way around back to the right, gazing over the right hand in your supine twist. See if you can ground either the knee or the shoulder or both eventually. Whatever is comfortable in your body in the spinal twist. From here, roll back over, both knees into the chest, give them a squeeze. Exhale, extend the right knee out, right leg out rather, as you take the left knee across the body, circling the left arm over towards the right and then back to the left as you gaze as, as you circle it, coming into your spinal twist. And just soften, relax the neck, relax the shoulders, relax the jaw, relax your mind. Soften. One more breath here. here. Exhale, roll back over, both knees to chest. Take one last inhale here. Give everything a squeeze. And exhale, release your feet to the front of the mat, adjusting as necessary into your shavasana. Corpse pose. Come into a deep and utter relaxation. Let your body melt into your mat like a puddle, expanding in every direction. Relax the breath control, come into stillness. If thoughts arise, just observe them like clouds in the sky, passing by, not giving too much attention to any of them. And stay in your Shavasana as long as you like. If you're ready to move on with your day, you can go ahead and just come back up into an easy seat or stay in your Shavasana. And if you're in Shavasana, I'm just taking my hands in front of my chest in gratitude to you guys for joining me today and practicing with me. And then also I'm asking you to give yourself gratitude for showing up to your mat today. And the light in me honors the light in each and every one of you. Namaste.